Imagine you heard a noise outside, and you could see in the dark. Hey! This is the Wild Garter Owler One. The Owler One from Wild Garter is a digital night vision binocular that lets you see well into the distance, day or night. Let's see what's in the box. The device has a simple layout of six well-marked buttons that are easily operated while looking through it. The front is equipped with a lens and an infrared light, and you view via a 4-inch magnified video viewfinder. The lens provides a 20 times optical zoom with an additional 4 times digital zoom. It fits securely in a nicely made case. It comes with a solid strap, USB cable, a handy card reader with USB, USB-C, and lightning connectors, lens cleaning cloth, and an instruction manual written in decent English and printed large enough to be easily readable. The Owler One does not have a built-in rechargeable power source. You'll have to load it up with AA batteries. It will run off four AA's, but there are two compartments accommodating eight AA's which will give you longer life. Note the proper battery installation configuration is printed inside the compartment. I had to drop $10 on an 8-pack of AA's, but I will say that in all the time I've spent testing this, filming it, plus family and friends playing with it, the battery indicator visible through the viewfinder has yet to drop at all. On the side, you'll find an HDMI output for playback on a TV, a USB port, and a memory card slot. The Owler One comes with its own 32GB micro SD card, so you're immediately ready to get out and start capturing photos and video as soon as you install batteries. The strap is nicer than I expected, with fully swiveling metal clips that are easy to attach and detach. Owler One is not equipped with image stabilization, so hand holding at 20 times zoom is a little shaky, though you can definitely see what's out there. The digital zoom further enlarges the existing pixels, so the image quality naturally degrades, though it may help you see something you'd miss otherwise. So I don't know if those of you who regularly follow my channel noticed or not, but I have hardly been doing any product reviews anymore on the channel. However, when uh, Wild Garter reached out to me and asked if I wanted to take a look at this device, uh, I was actually interested for a couple of reasons. So I don't own a pair of binoculars, but I've long wanted to get a set to keep in the truck. It's pretty common that uh, I'm out in the back country and I see something off in the distance on the next ridge line or whatever and I can't quite tell what it is even if I zoom in with my video camera I just don't have quite enough reach to make out what it is. A lot of times out wandering around Eastern Oregon or even down in Nevada and other states wild horses out there is always a thrill to find wild horses but they're very shy they largely seem to stay away from people they run away quickly sometimes you see a dot off on the horizon and can't quite tell is that a cow is that a horse so I thought it'd be nice to have some binoculars when Wild Garter reached out to me about their device 
one of the things that I thought was intriguing about it was not only the digital screen, uh, which you know reminds me of using a camera, feels very natural, but also the thing will actually record videos or take photos. So if I do see something off in the distance and I bring it into focus and like, oh wow, there's some wild horses out there, I could actually capture some video of it. Clearly, this is not designed to be a video camera and the footage that comes out of it is does not compare to what I get out of my dedicated video camera. But uh, getting some kind of shot is better than getting no shot at all. So I thought that was intriguing. Now obviously this is a little big, bulky, and heavy to be out hiking with. Um, I personally am not much of a hiker. I'm usually traveling around in my vehicle and that's when I'm most likely to spot something. So I imagine you're not going to take this backpacking, but it stows into a nice tidy little package with the case that it comes with, easy to throw in the truck and, and keep it handy. This is more than just like digital binoculars. This is also a night vision device and that was the other element that I thought was kind of intriguing about this product. Now it's not uncommon at all to be out dispersed camping in the wilderness by yourself, hear some noise out there, it's absolutely no light, impossible to see what's going on. I love the idea of being able to grab this, turn on that infrared light and look out there and see what I can see. Um, if it's up close or, you know, even if it's further out, you can zoom in, be a nice capability to have while out camping. So earlier in the video, I told you about um, all of the sort of features of the Owler One. Uh, let me tell you about a few little um, quirks and details that maybe I feel like could use some improvement, or that at least I struggled with a little bit. First of all, um, the, the screen is great. It's really nice having this big, bright screen to look at. It reminds me of looking you know, through one of my digital cameras with a digital display which in many ways is nicer than actually looking through a lens. The struggle that I run into with this is that there's no sort of diopter adjustment and I cannot see things that are up close. I need reading glasses to see things up close. So I pull this all the, up to my eyes all the way. I Even if I get the image in focus, I can't get my eyes to focus on that image. The only way I can really get a good look at the image is to actually put my reading glasses on and then uh, up close or at a little bit of a distance like this I can make out the image a little bit better. And with this kind of viewfinder screen I mean maybe it's just not possible to build in some kind of diopter adjustment because it's running on eight AA batteries that at 10 bucks a set I don't want to blow through unnecessarily quickly. You know my instinct is to shut this off as soon as I'm done looking through it because there's a good at least three second delay in starting this up. Uh, when I spot something um, it's not a quick process to get you know glass on whatever I'm trying to see. I gotta press and hold that button make sure that it's actually coming on. I gotta fumble around for my glasses to get my glasses on. By the time I go through that whatever I was trying to see may have moved off. And that brings me to another little struggle that I have is that it's fully manual focus and I don't know if there are other products along these lines that are autofocus. I'm accustomed to looking through the zoom of my video camera which has an excellent autofocus system. Very, very easy for me to find my subject, zoom in, keep my eye on my subject. Maybe I just need to spend some more time with this to get used to it but I find myself really struggling to um, pull it up to my eyes get it zoomed in on the subject and then as I'm trying to zoom in you know it goes out of focus and I'm trying to focus it and now I'm further zoomed in but now I no longer know where my subject that I'm trying to look at is and so I might raise my eyes and look for something but then I can't see <laughs> in the distance if I've got my glasses on that I need to see through here and so as you're zooming in on your subject you lose focus which makes it very difficult to track your subject and then by the time you get it back into focus because you're so zoomed in um, you know, it's disorienting, you get lost, and over and over and over, I try to zoom in on my subject and uh, I end up losing it. Then I'm zooming back out and trying to find it again and trying to zoom back in on it and losing focus again. At that distance, the slightest little movement, your, your field of view may have changed just in the process of doing that. With that kind of magnification, 
uh, hand holding the device, uh, you definitely get a lot of jitter. There is no image stabilization. Again, being accustomed to my video camera, which has uh, some excellent image stabilization built in, the way this jitters around feels a little bit jarring. Now this does have a tripod mount on the bottom, and I think that's probably a really great way to use this. If you can mount it on a tripod, then you're gonna get a much more stable viewing experience and recording experience if you're shooting some video. Having this on a tripod makes it much, much easier to keep your eyes on your subject if it's a, at a great distance, and also to get more stable footage that's not so shaky. Now, obviously for quick on the fly scenarios, if you're hiking or driving through the wilderness, you know, getting out a tripod and setting it up and putting everything together, you know, that's not a realistic scenario. But if you are out, I don't know, birding or some sort of situation where you're able to set up, or I mean, I suppose, surveillance of some sort i mean i'm up here on this hillside sort of in the shadows of the trees here and i can clearly see those people that are i mean i don't know i'm not very good at judging distances but looking at that football field there i would say those people are a good two football fields away 200 yards maybe a little less than that 160 170 i don't know i'm not very good at that if i was a private investigator and I was trying to track someone or see what they were up to. None of those people have any idea that I'm up here watching them. I mean, it's almost creepy. As you can see, you can't quite make out exactly who those people are, but if you knew who someone was, you knew that your subject was in an orange shirt walking down this street, pretty easy to track and see where he goes. I was sure I was misjudging those distances, so I used Google Maps to check. This flagger down at the corner was my closest subject, but was actually 266 yards away. This jogger was further across the park at 288 yards. And these people, who I first thought were less than 200 yards away, were actually 341 yards away. That's almost a fifth of a mile. So this obviously has a tripod socket on the bottom. Uh, if you want to use it regularly on and off a tripod uh, quickly, um, it's useful if you got a tripod that has a quick release plate. I have an extra quick release plate, and so I put it on the binoculars so that I can just slip it right on my tripod and I'm ready to go. When you activate the night vision mode, it turns on the infrared illuminator, which is astonishingly powerful. It's completely dark on my street, but I can easily see inside my neighbor's car. I can also clearly see what's inside his unlit garage he left open. So as you can see, possibly not see. It's, I'm out here, it's dark, it's nighttime. I'm gonna see what I can see. The infrared light can be adjusted to be wider or more focused, but even at its widest setting, it creates a hot spot that actually makes it a little difficult to scan for your subject. When the viewing lens is magnified, the light beam creates a more even illumination. Ah, there's the bunny I was looking for. This would be utterly impossible to see with the naked eye. I'm impressed by how well I can see even a small animal at considerable distance in complete darkness. In order to get a more precise visualization of these distances, I went over to the football field. Here's a 12 inch bunny at 10 yards.
Here he is at 20 yards. Now he scampered off to the 30 yard line. The bunny is now 50 yards away. At 100 yards, you can still see him lying on the ground there next to my bike. Turning my gaze over to the bleachers, I'm again impressed by how well I can see in the dark. I would even be able to see if someone was lurking under there, but with that invisible infrared light, they would not even know I was lighting them up. Across the park, I can easily see people playing on a lit volleyball court. As I moved through the park, I heard and easily found these people sitting in the dark about a hundred yards out. They had no idea I was watching them. And this was at the dimmest setting of the infrared illuminator. I was so stunned by how well I could see them that I didn't even think to switch to a brighter setting. Okay, I know I threw a lot of diverse details at you in this video, but here's some conclusions to sort of wrap it up. First of all, let's talk about some of the strengths of this. It is simply a useful multi-purpose device. Uh, it's binoculars by day, it's night vision by night, and it's a, a camera that can record video and shoot photos. Uh, definitely serves a lot of purposes. The reach is impressive with the 20 times zoom, and then you can stretch it even further with the digital zoom. Really can bring you a lot closer to something that's far away. The night vision is very impressive. I was impressed and stunned by simply how well I could see in the absolute darkness, stuff that I never would have been able to see, just very, very clear and at a considerable distance as well. Really blown away by the night vision provided by this. The display is bright, clear, uh, really easy to look at. It's really intuitive to use with these buttons on the front. The functions are easily accessible and make sense and very quickly my fingers just knew what to do. It's a nice package overall. It comes with a really nice case. I'm very impressed by this strap and I really like the fact that it came with a memory card, was able to plug it in, get out and start filming stuff right away. And really it's it's just fun. I mean, it's fun to use binoculars, but it's especially fun to use at night. Everyone that has come over and seen this thing has wanted to take it out and play with it. Uh, I've had many people have their hands on it. It's a fun, interesting thing to, to have in the vehicle. So as I mentioned in the video, there are some things that could use a little bit of improvement. With no image stabilization built in, it's definitely sort of jittery hand-holding this uh, when you're fully zoomed in. And it does make any video that you capture fully zoomed in probably unusable for anything other than like purely documentary or um, evidence or, or whatever. It's difficult to watch the handheld footage because it's just quite very jittery. Obviously putting it on a tripod makes a huge difference in the quality of footage that you get. The infrared light beam seems a little too focused and narrow for up close use. I wish you could widen it out even more for a more diffuse light so that if you were in the dark and something was relatively close, you could scan with a wide angle and see sort of your entire scene without having this super hot burnt out spot and then everything else kind of dark around it. At a distance though, I have to reiterate the infrared light is incredible. It's amazing, just stunning how far you can see how far this thing lights up. Probably the thing I struggled the most with is the fact that when you zoom in, you lose focus. Uh, with a device like this, having a parfocal lens, something that would maintain focus as you zoom in would be immensely beneficial because it's very, very difficult to know 
how far you want to zoom in or even if you're staying on your subject or not when that lens just goes out of focus as you try to zoom in then you find yourself hunting around for your subject after you've like refocused the lens zoomed in something like this where you're out in the wild trying to track something it would be immensely beneficial if the lens would stay in focus while you zoomed in the focus ring works smoothly but it is very very sensitive uh, especially at when you're zoomed in it takes just the tiniest tiniest little nudge on this ring to bring the image in and out of focus i feel this could be geared differently so that you would have finer control uh, of the focus without it jumping in and out of focus so so quickly as you can see in many of the clips in this video you can see me hunting back and forth trying to get that focus in and those are just minuscule movements on this ring so no built-in battery is kind of surprising i mean when's the last time you had to go and buy batteries for anything at all everything comes with built-in rechargeable batteries now you just plug it into usb and charge it up at the price point of about 350 dollars honestly i'm surprised it doesn't have built-in batteries my bluetooth speaker that i use to listen to music around the house i mean that was like 40 bucks and it's got a built-in battery on the plus side this has got a lot of use with me playing with it testing it filming with it and also just People who came over have been playing with it also. Uh, the battery indicator has not gone down at all. And so I think I'm gonna get good long life out of the AA batteries. I think the website says that it'll run for six hours straight with the infrared light on. I think a lot of the time I'm not gonna be using the infrared light. And so um, I suspect that I'll be able to go a good long time. One could obviously invest in a set of rechargeable AA batteries, but then that becomes one more thing that you have to manage separately in terms of recharging. And I mean, I'm not going to go down that road, but it would be an option. So the other thing I struggled a little bit with, as I explained earlier, is just the fact that with my aging vision, I cannot focus on that screen unless I've got my reading glasses on. And, you know, many devices have a, a diopter correction for your eye. I don't even know if it would be possible with this type of screen where you've got a video screen and a magnifier. I, I don't know how you would do it because it's not round and maybe it's not possible. And I am getting used to using my reading glasses with it. It's sort of a clunky extra step, but it does remain usable to me. I just wish there was uh, a way to correct for different type of vision. So even though there are some details that I feel could use improvement, uh, I will be super happy to have this thing in the truck. This will become part of my gear that I keep with me all the time. I know it's gonna be useful. It can be useful during the day, spotting wildlife or whatever else I may see off in the distance. And also super nice to have during the night when I hear those strange sounds in the dark and wanna know what's going on out there around my camp. Uh, really glad to have this in the truck. And who knows, that night vision may even come in handy around the house too. So as I said, the Eller One is priced at about $350. I do think they sometimes have discounts that come up on their website. I'll put a link in the description below so you can go take a look at it. And thank you for watching.